a Queen Anne Victorian style home right now and it was built in 1892. This home was home to Deadwood's three most prominent families. Uh, the third owner was W.E. Adams. In 1934, W.E. Adams leaves this home to a second wife, Mary. Mary decides to stay here for just a short time, then she heads to California. And when she does, she leaves everything in the home just as it was, furniture and all. Much like you would if you were just going on vacation, except she leaves it this way for 51 years only coming back once or twice a year to give her friends a tour or play bridge in the home, but never staying overnight again. We still have her cookies in the cookie jar. They're over 80 years old. They still look pretty good, but of course don't try one. I was going to ask you what they taste like. Probably uh, dusty. Now in 1987, Mary does finally decide to sell this home due to aging and poor health to a couple who briefly opens up the home as a bed and breakfast. They run their business here for a couple of years, then sell it to the city of Deadwood, who puts in $1.5 million of restoration, especially on the exterior, to bring it back to its 19, or excuse me, 1892 status. Then we open for tours in the year 2000. Is the furniture still the original furniture? Yes, from the Adams Family Collection, as everything was just left behind, which is lucky, because the restorers didn't have to go out and find anything. Now, the first owners who lived here, this is Harris and Anna Franklin, here in this horse-drawn carriage. Harris and Anna moved here in 1877. This is at the height of Deadwood's gold rush. And they quickly amassed a fortune soon after arriving by selling liquor and tobacco. Now, Harris was also an investor. He invested in banking, mining, and cattle ranching. At one point, up to 45,000 head of cattle was also a major financial backer when they built the Franklin Hotel here in town, naming it after him. In 1892, he decides to have this home built. It cost him between eight to $10,000 at the time, which we would just love to do today. <laughs> and he puts in an array of modern amenities, actually what made this house so significant. Electric lighting, radiator heat, which we still use to heat the home today, indoor plumbing, hot and cold running water, telephone service, and if you peek to the left at that light switch there, you'll notice a white round button, that being the servant's call button. You press that button, the bells ring in the kitchen, and they even had a lighted panel that would show the servants which room they are to be needed in. Now all of that is being pretty techy for Deadwood of 1892. Do you have a question? Yeah, uh, how, um, how much would it be today if um, that question. guy would have... Now, now, dollar to dollar amount uh, from then to now, it would be a little bit over $250,000, which is still inexpensive today. So really, Harris had built this home for pretty cheap. But of course, this home would be much more than that actually today, <laughs> with all its restoration and all of that. Now, in um, 1890, the railroad came to town here in Deadwood. And so Harris was lucky to bring in even more of those fine things to his home here, including these fireplace mantles. There's three of these mantles within the home, and they were all ordered from the Sears Roebuck Catalog oh, Company. <laughs> Go figure. The tile here is from Trent Tile Company in New Jersey. It's called Mahalika or Majolica. On the walls, notice is Egyptian cotton canvas. This is stretched over a plaster and then glazed, put over top, uh, stippled with a stippling brush for that texture you see. And all of the borders are hand stenciled and hand painted, mm -hmm. even on the ceiling. Mm. And they would have been way brighter. Right? A bit brighter, yes. Probably the blues and the yellows would have been more pigmented, but the rooms would have still been very dark like today, oh. actually. Part of that Queen Anne style. <laughs> so lucky it wasn't painted over. And yes. Changed. Now, uh, 1902, Anna does pass, and by 1905, Harris decides to pack up and head to New York, where he was living previously, selling this home for one dollar to his son, Nathan mm. Franklin. Lucky to be him. <laughs> Nathan moves in with his wife, Ada, and their daughter, Mildred. Mildred is the only child to ever grow up here. She used to play hide and seek. A good place to play, right? Now, the other children were well into their adult lives by the time their parents purchased this home. 
Nathan had his own pharmacy business here in Deadwood, and he was also two-term mayor of Deadwood, pretty popular. He did invest in banking also like his father. In 1920, Nathan and his family decided to pack up and head to New York also, selling this home to his former political rival, W.E. Adams, and W.E.'s first wife, Alice. They have two daughters, um, the youngest, Helen, right back here. However, not a photograph there, that's done in charcoal. Mm -hmm. would be served in its fine china cup and these prongs here in the middle would take off that top part in order to eat the egg right out of its shell. Speaks for its time. Yeah. Now all the china and stemware on the table is from Bavaria, Germany. Heinrich and Company. If you look close you'll see WEA engraved on all of this silver. That's standing for um, William Emery Adams. On the far side then notice the charger plate. That's 18 karat gold around the outside with a porcelain center. Mm -hmm. Today, charger plates are mainly uh, used as a decorative piece, but at this point in time, uh, they did serve a purpose. Dinners were social events. They could be lasting up to two to three hours. And because of, the, uh, because of this, these charger plates would be heated, served under the other plates like this, in case you got stuck in a conversation with your guests about all that fancy plumbing you have. <laughs> Now the servant's call button isn't on the wall in this room. It would have been right underneath the table. There's a little mm -hmm. brass outlet where the button would have sat on top there. The head of the house would be sitting here, and I suppose instead of walking the few steps to press the button on the wall when you need <laughs> your next course, you just tap your foot. Isn't that nice? There's even one in the breakfast nook as well. Above, notice this beautiful plaster frieze oh, wow. below the plaster scallop. This was brought in by train in three-foot sections. However, this room did suffer some water damage. Over those 51 years when Mary practically left it empty, you can imagine there wasn't much upkeep going on here. This house used to have an internal rain getter system, which does require upkeep, otherwise water and debris can get in, which is what happened here. But luckily, the restoration experts were able to come in and find parts without any damage and examine it enough in order to use 100% of the same tools and technologies of 1892 to bring it right back to that year. Talking more about the Adams family. Notice W.E. Adams there, taken in later years. W Thank you. <laughs> W.E. was born in Michigan and then grew up in Minnesota. Um, his parents being farmers, he moved here in 1877. The same year as Harris Franklin, they actually were friends ran in the same social circles. W.E. Adams had his own wholesale grocery business here in Deadwood. He was also four-term mayor of Deadwood, so he was very popular. And he actually spent a lot of time traveling by train to California. Because in California, he had his own citrus grove business. Very busy. That being said, W.E. had two other homes in California, as well as this one here. Pictured here his vacation home, Palm Springs, California, mm. and his other home in Pasadena, California, we'll see pictured upstairs. Notice here W.E. next to his first wife, Alice. Pictured here are their 1880 wedding photos. The family Bible was given to them as a wedding gift by Alice's mother. They had two daughters, Lucille is the oldest, and then Helen the youngest. This is the one in that charcoal print in the sitting room. However, very unfortunate, W.E. experienced a lot of tragedy here amongst his family. In 1909, Lucille marries a boy named Frank Stratton, and they move to Detroit, Michigan, to get involved into the automobile industry. But three years later, in 1912, Lucille dies of typhoid fever, mm -hmm. only 28. Helen moves to Pasadena, California to attend school, and there she marries Irvin Wright Benton in 1915. Ten years later, they are expecting a baby in 1925. Of course, they're very excited, as well as the grandparents-to-be are very excited, too. But sadly, near the same time, Alice is diagnosed with cancer. Now, against doctor's orders, Alice does make the decision to travel to California to be with her daughter during this time. But soon after arriving, Alice dies unexpectedly. Mm -hmm. The shock of losing her mother actually sending Helen into premature labor. Mm -hmm. Helen does give birth to a baby girl, but 
She has complications and Helen dies as well. Oh. The baby girl who they also named Helen only living a few short hours. <clears throat> Those three deaths happening within 48 hours of each other. Oh. Now W.E. Adams, you can only imagine how sad and devastated he must have been. He lost his whole family. He comes back to this empty home and he writes down the deaths in the family Bible here. Him and Alice were married for 45 years. But there is a silver lining to the story. <coughs> Further on in the tour, we'll talk about how a short year later he meets Mary. We know the dress in the closet was handmade by Lucille at finishing school in Kenosha, Wisconsin for a pageant. And take a peek at the bathroom when you get a chance because it is the only original. Everything within the bathroom is from 1892 except for the shower curtain and the toilet paper. <laughs> Notice a rain shower brought in from France, 24 karat gold bands around the tub. You may notice an entrance to the hall. Is it to the hall? That uh, would have been used by the guests there when it was the only bathroom at one time. <laughs> the bowl in the toilet is actually made of milk glass. And when you turn on the faucet uh, for the tub, the water fills up from the bottom of the tub, not from the faucet. Very interesting. Her bedroom being down the hall beforehand, she had to go to the basement to a makeshift bath. Uh, basically a bucket. So this was a gesture for her. But when you peek inside the maid's bathroom, you'll notice she doesn't have a sink. And that's because, walk down further and peek inside her bedroom. You'll notice she has one of her own of these Italian marble hand painted sinks, put in 1892, original to the home. So take a peek inside the maid's bedroom, and also take notice, it looks like there's two closets inside the maid's bedroom. Now there's one closet and one of those doors is the original stairwell to the gentleman's smoking room up there. So that was the original wallpaper and then Mary yes. put this wallpaper. These are more footprints up here. Now you'll notice there's two different ones. This room was the second room of the house to sustain that water damage. Notice there's no light fixture. Uh, this ceiling was almost entirely caved in in this room. Oh, yeah. This room sustained the most water damage of the other room. Now the rumor behind the bathroom is um, that was the maid that took care of Alice when she had cancer. Oh. So he decided to put in that bathroom for her because special. Yeah, very special place in their heart. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>